Welcome back to Me, My Bike and I. My name's Rich. Today we're going to carry on doing some servicing on the Honda NT650. So I've removed the panels from uh, both sides of the bike. And the reason I've done that, I need to get to the uh, engine blocks. I didn't record removing any of the fairings because it's just one of those fiddly jobs. I've never taken them off this bike before. And uh, it's just an interlocking puzzle. You just need to find all the fixings and sort of figure it out as you go, really. Now, this isn't super interesting, but on this particular fuel tap, this is the off position. This is the reserve position there. And that's the on position. But on that little plate, on the actual pet cock behind, you've got the uh, fuel position at the top, the reserve position at the side, and the off position down there. So, yeah, I don't know what Honda were doing this one. Just gonna stuff a rag down there and catch any fuel that leaks out. Try hands and screwdriver. Once you've got it free, right, it's about to pop off. I don't want loads of fuel getting splattered everywhere, particularly all over my face. Right, there you go, that's come off, that's all right. You know, it'll slip back on really easily because I'll just grease it up. There you go, just get a little. What do you call it? One of them things in there. Once you've got it past the little hooks, it's easy. Oh dear. Crikey. Now it's turning, so. twist in a pull is sometimes easier than just a pull isn't it? it kind of unscrews itself there you go oh oh crikey oh right as per usual it's going to be difficult huh. that couldn't be easier could it when I said it's going to be difficult I could have actually just disconnected it from that union there, it would have been just as simple. Well, we don't always make life easy, do we? Yeah, so I don't know if you can even see this. If you can see just in there, I'm poking my finger, you just see that steel pipe. So that's where that drain runs up through the tank through a steel pipe. And just to there. So yeah, that'll just uh, drain away any rainwater that gets in or any fuel that spills over. Okay, now just onto the breather. Yeah, so jobs you can do with the tank off and all the fairings, so you can get to the uh, radiator cap, so you can do a change. I'm not actually going to do that today. Uh, take the lid off the air box, sort that out. So that's the rear block, so it's a V-twin. Can't even see the front block, there's the front block. Um, so that's the plug on top. That's the other one. That's the plug on the side, so those two are now well exposed and easy to get to. On the front block, that one, you don't need to take anything off to get to it because there's a sort of a, an air vent through the uh, fairings. But that's the uh, plug on the front block on the top, which you can't really get to any 
uh, anyway by taking all the stuff off the top so um, I guess that one's just the one fiddly plug whatever you do I'm not even sure taking the air box off completely would help I don't think that um, makes any difference so uh, we shall just persevere with that one You can get away with you for some reason. Um, I need well. Do you know what? I need a completely different plug spanner. Um, I'm using just a 19 mm long reach socket, but it's a bit floppy around it, and not really enough clearance between the actual head and the block. So I think I'm going to have to find out what size plug spanner I need and buy a different one. Uh, these are the only two I've got, a 13 sixteenths and a 5 eighths. So, yeah, and just on the rear block, on the top, uh, whilst you can kind of get away with a 19mm just about fitting, uh, it, won't even go down the, <laughs> it won't even go down the plug hole on this one, so that's uh, definitely a non-starter. Well, I've clearly got away with that before on other bikes, but not this time just can't get in there so we have to go and get another plug spanner I've only got two 5 eighths and 13 sixteenths so um, 5 eighths doesn't quite fit so I suspect there must be a half inch size which will probably slip over there just nicely and the, um, the plug spanners that I've got or sockets do slot down uh, that little um, plug well easily regular size 19mm socket doesn't it's just too big too much meat on it so um, yeah let me get myself down to Alfreds and see what you find. Right, we're back. Excuse my rusty workbench. Grind off. So, yeah, five eighths, too small. That's under 16 mil actually. I'm not sure I was babbling on about half inch because that's even smaller. Um, 13 sixteenth, which is under 21 millimeter. And the plug wrench I need is actually 18 mil. And all I've got is a long reach 19 mil socket, and that's no good whatsoever because it won't get into the uh, plug wells on the top of the cylinders and it's a bit tight on the side because there's not really much clearance between the plug and the block because of the thickness of the socket because it's not really designed for the job so I bought myself a 18mm plug socket so up until now I've always got away with using what I've got but not this time uh, there you go straight in And uh, straight out by all accounts, so right tool for the job this time, that's for sure. Where's that gone? Okay, I think to get to that one in there, uh, you can see a little drip of water there, that's where I took the radiator cap off. Um, I think I just need to take these bits away just to get a bit more access because you can't come at it from the top, there's absolutely nowhere to go. I don't think it's in the way. off as such, I can just get round it I think. I 
these are going to be devilishly difficult to get back in. Because that's where it is. You've got that thermostat housing there on the radiator. Well, I've learned to my cost before not to mess with things that you don't need to mess with. That plug on the front is looking like it's going to be an absolute git to get out, particularly that plug spanner. Uh, you can't even touch the tip of the plug with your fingers, that's how awkward it is to get to. How on earth I'm going to get that back in, I don't know. With that plug spanner, which just flops around all over the place, I don't think that's going to happen. So, um, I'm going to leave it for now and just do the other three. Bike's running fine. Um, I am getting a little bit of a popping backfiring from the carburetors, but I think that's down to the air filter. So I'm going to change the other three plugs, I'm going to leave that one in situ for now, and I'm going to get myself a different plug spanner to deal with that one. Plugs don't look too bad, to be fair, does look like normal wear to me, so um, I don't think there's any harm in not replacing that front one just, just now, but um, I will replace it, but I just need to get a tool that's going to get it out and get it back in successfully and I don't think that uh, plug spanner is going to do it. Just too floppy, putting it back in. Uh, it's very difficult to get plugs lined up in the first instance because the threads are so fine. So anyway, let's, um, let's check the gaps on these. Um, it should be 0.8 to 0.9 millimetres according to the service manual and that's 0.8, that seems fine. Yeah, well, just about. That's a sort of a fairly loose fit, 0.8 mil. So they're clearly within their range. So they don't look like they've suffered any. They look like they've got sort of normal wear on them. And uh, don't uh, have any problems there. So that's all good. I should just go ahead and gap the new ones. not ideal but if I take that out and can't get the new one back in there's going to be problems maybe I should just go for it right well <laughs> it's on its way out now so any second now there's no going back Me getting that back in. Yeah, she seems all right. Point eight, slightly looser, so definitely between the point eight and point nine. Condition looks okay, so could have got away with leaving it in, but then you know, who knows? Could be quite an old plug. Can still fail. Okay. So what I need is a plug wrench that's a little bit longer than this so this doesn't get in the way of the frame. I need something that's a bit stiffer because this is just too floppy and I need something that holds on to the plug until I can get it in there, get some threads turned in and then I can revert to using the plug spanner. So I'm going to use a length of fuel hose pushes over the end nicely and I think that will give me 
quite a bit of reach. So let's give that a try. I don't know if it'll work, but we can try. Well, I think they've got it, you know. Um, I really couldn't have done it without that bit of flexible hose. So, yeah, top tip for anyone doing this on an NT650. Realise you're not going to be able to see anything here, but... You can see, if you get it in quite a distance, it sort of just fouls on the old frame here. So, can't quite tell, it's just slightly too short. Yeah, not ideal. I mean, obviously I can't turn it with my hands. Right, now I can undo and do up the darn thing properly. I can actually tell that it's threaded okay and that it's seated fine, so that's absolutely fine. Get that on so I can nip it up. completely buggered up the wrench. <laughs> uh, nothing more than an eighth of a turn on those. That's generally what I do. my hose trick on this one as well. I 
Oh, that might have taken straight away. We'll soon see in a minute if it's still turning. No, there you go. Wow. WD-40 sorted that out. Right, so yeah, that's the fuel pump end. So let's just uh, take that off. WD-40 through it's going to hurt it. <laughs> Look at that straight on. Stick the tips back on. Stick that one on. Okay. I think that'll do no harm whatsoever. Tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of penetrating fluid. And we'll go and stick that back on the other end. <laughs> Take that rag away now. Say that when we get it on there, can't we? Shouldn't be too difficult. Right, let's pop that back on. There you go. Uh, right. Okay. Should slip on quite easy now. Yeah, nice. Is it probably JIS? I don't know.
comes off all just one piece, so I need to get these off as well. So this is going to need to be replaced because it's just <laughs> disintegrating. And someone very kindly put a date on there of the 15th of April 19. I don't think you can see it. It's just there, they've done it in a paint pen. So I should do that as well on the one I'm going to put in. I'm going to have to order one of those before I put it all back together. So this is the old one, and I can tell you it is considerably heavier than the new one. And that will just be because it's just got ingrained with oil from, from the crankcase breather. Let's drop the new one in. So this old filter has been on the bike three and a half years. Um, that might never have been changed, but <laughs> I mean, that's just disintegrating. So uh, I don't know whether a regular bit of sponge would do it, but I'm not gonna risk it. I have a replacement sub air filter direct from Honda. I say direct from Honda, I got it from David Silver Spares in Ipswich. Um, but it's a Honda original OEM, that's what I meant to say. And I could have used a bit of sponge, but it is part of the carburettors and I would rather it was OEM uh, for the avoidance of damaging any of the other soft parts in the carburettor, namely the diaphragms on the slides, um, because that's what this is filtering air for. And <laughs> that's all that's left of the original, it's just turned to dust in my fingers, so it didn't have any service um, life recommendations at all, apart from just remove it and clean it, and uh, you can see that's well past it, so let's get and fit this one. Actually, uh, one thing this does call for is uh, to soak it in SAE 90 or 80 gear oil for installing so there is uh, some sort of procedure there there we go I should do it and then just slot it in So the sub air filter has nothing to do with the main filter so clearly when you've got the lid on this it's drawing fresh air in from the front of the bike filtering it down through there and into the top of the carbs where it gets mixed with fuel to make your fuel air mix to chuck into your cylinder. This is completely separate as you can see it's uh, got a pipe either side and the lid to this is attached to the lid to the main filter housing but they're completely disconnected from each other in every other way and you can see you've got a pipe coming out of each side and each pipe put some light in there goes up into the carburetors now inside the carburetor of course you've got a slider a diaphragm that's moving backwards and forwards and it's pushing air backwards and forwards behind it through the lid through a union um, that covers that diaphragm and that air just pumps backwards and forwards and out through that filter so it just stops really crap and detritus getting in, getting on the diaphragm, damaging in long term because I suspect uh, if it wasn't filtered that diaphragm in there would look very much like that filter did which would turn to dust and that would obviously cause you hundreds of pounds worth of repair costs rather than just a few quid to replace that filter. Right, 
let's just refit this. See if we can do this without getting our hands in the way. Hmm. Let's make this one a bit easier, shall we? Right, well that's all the servicing done for now. I've not changed the coolant. I'm gonna leave that for another day. It looks fine as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the panels back on. I'm not gonna film doing that because it's a bit fiddly. It's just like a interlocking little puzzle and it can be a little bit time consuming. So uh, I can't really film it as I go because I just need to figure it out as I go but it won't take too long. Once I've done that, I've got a couple of little checks I'm gonna do before I book it in for its MOT. I'll show you the checks when we get to it. Right, that's the, uh, all the fairings back on, so I'm just doing the tank fixings up. And you really don't wanna sit and watch somebody struggling to put all these fairings on. It is an absolute, well, it's not a jigsaw puzzle. It pretty much is, it is like an interlocking puzzle. I'm not gonna say like a Chinese puzzle or anything like that, but you know, it is, it's like a Chinese puzzle. And uh, yeah, it takes ages. <laughs> Nine bits. I need to. Um, I do need to do a coolant change. I just didn't really have time this time around, and it's looking okay. But, uh, I'll have to get all that off again when it comes to do the coolant change. Right. Let's see if we can just connect this back up. way back on really. There you go, keep an eye on that, make sure we don't get any leaks. Should be fine. Right, now that's all finished. I've got the jack under the engine, front wheel off the ground, so I'm just gonna check three things on the front wheel, and then I'm gonna book it in for its MOT. So, very quickly, just checking that the head bearings don't feel notchy, they feel okay. I've got a bit of free play there, but I think that's within sort of limits, and this is a bit tricky to do, but just give the wheel a bit of a wiggle to side to side. Can't feel any play in that at all. So the bearings are fine. Well, I've owned this bike about eight months now, and I've put about 5,000 miles on her, so she's been a lot of fun. And I've done quite a bit of servicing and repairs as well. I've done the engine oil and filter change, the final drive oil, brake pads, blend brakes, complete fork rebuild, and on this little round of jobs, I've done the air filter, sub air filter, spark plugs and fuel filter, but that was probably the biggest faff of all. Anyway, it's due its MOT in about three days time, so I'm going to get that booked in. The reason I just did that final little check on the front wheel there is because on the last MOT, um, 
the previous chap that owned the bike, the MOT tester noted that the head bearings were just a little notchy, so he backed them off on the adjusters, which is why I actually saw a little bit of free play there, but I think that's okay, and with intolerance, um, so I'm not going to do anything with those unless the MOT tester says I should, he's the expert, he will make the assessment, um, and the front wheel bearing looked absolutely fine as well. So, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and I will see you on the next video.